Kia ora. Welcome back to the Ins and Outs podcast. I'm Kun. I'm Jamila, and we're here to have casual and informative conversations about how to navigate the music industry in Aotearoa. On this episode, we had a korero with Kelvin Culverwell about the ins and outs of artist well-being. Kelvin is the well-being manager at Parachute Studios. His role is to provide one-on-one professional support for individuals pursuing a career in music, but he likes to describe his work as catching up with people for coffee. We talked about managing expectations, redefining your understanding of success, and finding a way to make your career in the creative sector more sustainable, both mentally and physically. Let's dive into it. Kelvin, you've been supporting artists with their mental health and well-being for a while. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your journey and what your role is in the, in the music industry currently? Yeah, so I work for an organization called Parachute Music uh, based in Tamaki Makoto, uh, just in Kingsland. We've got this incredible community studio facility. Um, and really everything we're trying to do is come alongside uh, full-time professional artists, producers, songwriters, and uh, help them uh, pursue a career in a way that is sort of you know, healthy, uh, financially viable, <laughs> sustainable, like yeah, all those yeah. sorts of things that kind of come with that. And um, really about six years ago, Parachute was looking for ways of kind of expanding that, not just not just in that studio facility, but also to take it to the wider industry. And part of that was to bring someone on board uh, who could provide one-on-one support and and help in different ways. And so that's been that's been what I do. Um, so the simplest way of kind of describing that day to day is is I sit with people often, uh, providing what I'd call like sort of pastoral care, uh, or sometimes just being a friend. Yeah. Mm. Um, so often that's just in a cafe somewhere, hearing about the things that are affecting them. Sometimes that is mental health related. Sometimes that's struggles with money. Sometimes that's um, issues with the manager or people not paying invoices or just you know the, the sort of day to day challenges that people come up with, and just being able to be in, a, in an environment where they can just sort of have someone as a soundboard. So I do that. Um, then I do something that is a much more sort of formal version of that. That's professional supervision. Mm-hmm. Um, that is a sort of, you know, once a month dedicated confident space for people to engage with the things that are happening in their work. Um, and really in that space, we are talking about uh, sort of conflict issues, you know, having a more in-depth look at how mental health is affecting their day-to-day work. Um, we might be looking at some of the soft skills. So if you're a producer, how do I create a safe space mm. for the artists that I'm working with? Yeah. So on and so forth. Uh, forth. It's uh, a sort of a reflective listening practice. So often I'm just asking questions. Most people have their own answers. Yeah. Um, they just don't necessarily know how to pull them out. So mm. I'm, I'm trying to create a space where we can land on those mm. things. Um, and then the the last thing I do is, is just a ton of what I would call like industry advocacy. So I work with other industry organizations talking about how do we make careers in the music industry more viable? How do we make the industry a safer place for creatives? Um, and so sometimes that uh, is sort of helping with the development of new policy or helping small businesses um, set up new policies uh, in what they're doing, um, explaining some of the legal ins, ins and outs of, of what a sole trader is supposed to do because most people don't realize that yeah. they're supposed to have policies or something <laughs> like that. Um, and then also just getting involved in sort of industry hui um, yeah. with uh, government branches like Creative New Zealand. Um, yeah, so just just kind of going in and and and. Uh, going in on behalf of artists and creatives mm. and saying, you know, this is what we want to see happen for our artist community. Yeah, yeah. lots of different cool stuff. Uh, yeah. yeah. How, yeah, just how a did few you things. like find yourself falling into that space? Because it's quite a unique um, collection of, of job titles that you that you have going on. Yeah, it's really peculiar, and some of it's just just really just pulling the string. I think my first real taste of wanting to be someone who works with people. Um, you know, came in a music environment. Um, for me growing up, like I, I wanted to play in bands, I wanted to tour the world mm. and, uh, you know, uh, my sort of best memories at sort of 18, 19, 20, it was like we were, we were traveling around the countries in vans and we were playing shows everywhere and, and I always loved the people element mm. of that. So, you know, 
yeah, playing a show was awesome, but I also loved that we would be standing outside or sitting on a ledge somewhere on a curb and you'd have these great conversations. Um, and when I was 21, I, I went and lived in the States for a while and I was playing with a band in Florida and was working for um, some other bands on tour. And so I got to travel around the States. Cool. And um, the same thing was happening at every show, sitting outside, mm -hmm. having conversations, good conversations, deep conversations. Um, but also that was the first time I really saw the kind of... Uh, the kind of dark side of mm. the music industry. It was the mm. first time I saw people really experiencing uh, like a reliance on hard substances or, or alcohol. It was the mm. first time I, I sort of really saw um, depression and anxiety up close, um, saw burnout up close. Um, and, you know, I didn't, didn't even have those sort of words or tools as a vocabulary. Mm. Um, for for understanding that so it was really strange to me here are people living my dream mm -hmm. you know the thing doing the thing i wanted to do and they were they were miserable mm -hmm. they were really struggling and so um for me in that space i was like man i want to work with people so i came back and i started studying and did a whole bunch of uh, things over 10 years but um you know come six years ago parachute sort of came knocking and we got mm -hmm. into some conversations and yeah, it's just been it's been a, for me a, a a great sort of coalescence of the things I love, which is which is music and mm. being with people. Yeah, there's a, a strong tendency for creative people to fall into those places oh, as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, big time, big time. Mm. It's so strange actually because it's exactly what you're saying, Calvin. It's it looks like a dream on the outside. It looks like these guys are touring. They're playing their music to thousands of people, but really this quite an underbelly, and mm. it's it's more of a common theme than you'd think from the outside perspective. And it's like, how do you, you know, avoid that? Or, and of course, and, and if, if it's too late to avoid it, how do you deal? Mm. How do you, how do you handle that? How do you deal with it? Yeah. Even as an artist, I feel like there's yeah. a lot of, um, you sometimes deal with this thing and then you have a conversation, like sitting yeah. outside somewhere with somebody and realize, oh, you're also dealing with that mm. thing and then you have a conversation with someone two weeks later. Sometimes when something's happening in your life, it kind of crops up in, in different areas and you actually realise that everyone else that you also admire that's doing this thing is also struggling with, yeah. with similar things and it's like, oh, okay, this is an interesting theme or an interesting thing that creatives are dealing with and, and often people don't really know where to find support. And I think, I mean, the first time that I interacted with you was – after you came and spoke when I was in university and I was like, wow, that's so fascinating that that's a, a job role that you're doing. And I remember <laughs> that we caught up for coffee and, and you've also caught up with Calvin yeah. for coffee. And I think it really does, you, you are such a good person for that job and that in the way that it, it really does feel so natural, but oh, that's you. so beneficial just to talk <laughs> about how you're feeling. And I remember you saying to me then that, people don't always need additional support. Sometimes people just need to have a coffee with somebody and yeah. have a corridor and have a conversation and, and get, get it off their chest and not feel so alone. Yeah, I think that's it. I think sometimes we think because it, there is a, there's a, a sort of a false sense of community around music. We're around people all the mm. time. You're playing shows, you're talking to other creatives. But the reality is, is, is it's quite an isolating experience mm. and people feel very alone. The people that are successful tend to get very protective of what the kind of piece of land that they've carved out for themselves, their, their own sense of security. And so it can be a very isolating place. And so sometimes I feel like the thing that I can offer the best is just to be a friend, to be present to someone, to mm. the things that are going on. You know, often it's not needing a therapist sometimes it is and mm. and that's a big part of what I do is helping people make a plan for okay you've got this thing that's actually a bit deeper than something that's just going on on the surface let's get you the support you need but other times it's just like it's just someone just needs a bit of a sounding board so mm. yeah it's hugely important mm. Mm. what do you feel like is is there sort of one thing one obviously it's not one thing there's like <laughs> thousands of different things one combination of things that you see artists going through most often like I know that burnout for creative people is is can be something really Super reoccurring common. and I think a lot of other um like mental health and well-being issues sort of can sometimes be tied to those intricacies yeah look I think I think the biggest thing that it kind of comes back to for all creatives and particularly artists who are wanting to be front-facing and sort of building a public profile a lot of it comes back to 
what I would say is like a sense of identity and purpose. Mm. Who am I and what am I supposed to do with this world? I think it's very common for artists to feel uh, a sort of elevated sense of that, whether they ascribe some sort of spirituality to that or, or whatnot. It doesn't, mm. it doesn't really matter, but there is the sense that creativity brings something into the world that sort of the sciences or business or anything can't. And I think creatives feel very connected to that, if that kind of makes sense. Sure. Um, but then there's the sort of ongoing struggle of like needing to commodify that creativity and have something sustainable. And so there are all these points of dissonance, I think, that um, artists experience. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, you, you come back to something like what we were just talking before about, you know, these are the dreams. People want to be touring. They want to mm. be playing in front of thousands of people. Um, and, you know, I, I want people to hear me like that's awesome. Yeah. Mm. Um, but just because something's awesome doesn't mean it isn't hard. Mm, yeah. It is incredibly hard. You're away from your support network. Um, you're often, you know, living on a $9 a day per diem. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're sleeping in vans. You're like six or seven people sharing two beds in like a, in like a, a crappy <laughs> motel somewhere. Mm. So, you know, there are just a whole bunch of things you're not, you're not prepared for, um, including when you start experiencing success and people start giving you affirmation. Um, those things don't necessarily connect on the level you think thought we would mm. we sometimes conflate the idea of like sort of commercial success with with our own happiness mm. totally. and so I think these are all the kinds of things that come into play when we talk about identity and purpose um, because at some level we're, we're just trying to sort of affirm and feel full in mm. and of ourselves and so I think you know, a lot of the time when I'm having conversations, regardless of what the starting point is, whether it's anxiety or depression or whether it's finances or any of these things, um, oftentimes that becomes a bit of like a common denominator. That's the journey we end up going towards. Um, because if you don't have a sort of healthy metric of success, if you aren't sort of connected to your your wider sense of your own humanity and what you're doing, um, then ultimately you're going to hit some kind of like speed bumps along the way. You're going to have some sort of some sort of disparate feeling where it's like I thought this thing was going to give me this, but I, really? I still kind of feel like shit. So mm. yeah. Mm. You're saying there's these really cool things that happen, and it is taxing and it is exhausting, mm -hmm. and you kind of don't see that coming until it's too late and then you had this expectation that the whole thing was going to be amazing but really yeah you're still experiencing these very human feelings and emotions and can't really justify them because you feel like all this commercial success you should be feeling amazing because you're doing really great yeah. and your your brand that you've built up is is successful and everything sort of falls into place mm. except for your feelings yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. and expectation works the other way as well. You expect something to be successful and then it doesn't. And so suddenly you feel pretty rubbish about that piece totally. of art that you put into the world. Expectation is a really helpful thing for us to talk about. Once again, it's the kind of thing that pops up in my conversations all the time. Mm -hmm. What was your expectation in this thing? And, and to then sit with that expectation and go, was that a reasonable expectation? Was it a healthy expectation? Why is that expectation there? And then you can start unpacking mm. some of that stuff a little bit. Um, but yeah, the reality is, is that at the source of like a lot of our internal and external conflict or the things we're struggling with, um, often an unmet expectation is a pretty, mm. pretty major thing in that. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's really important to talk about how we like navigate that or name mm. that or even look to like redefine like what our expectations yeah. are a little bit. How do you find like is there any advice or tips that you would give to someone that's struggling with managing managing expectations? Because it is it is really hard to know how to set a goal because you want to shoot for the stars essentially, you know, that's kind of like what a lot of us are doing as artists. Sure. Um but at the same time you want to keep it real and not expect expect the stars when you quite maybe likely aren't gonna I'm like, I'm going to get that. How do you do you have any advice on how to navigate that or understand how to manage, manage those, those expectations? expectations? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, look, I think this this might not necessarily work for everyone, but I, I think it's really important to come back to the core principles of mm. why are you making music in the first place? Mm. I think Rick Rubin said in some interview and if you haven't read his book, I'm going to plug it now. <laughs> it's awesome. But in in some interview when he was talking about stuff, he said, "Look, if you want to make money, 
I'll show you a whole bunch of other ways you can make money really easily and chart a path towards money. Um, you know, that's not hard, mm. but music is not the place to do that. No. Mm. Um, so, you know, the reason you make music is because you feel like there is something inside of you or you have an ability to articulate things that need to be in the world, that that reveal things, that, that call people to experience something in a particular way. Um, and so, I, you know, I really, I really like his view of creativity in that way, I think. And, you know, I kind of agree with that. This is what this is what artists bring to the mm. table is they they give us something that that kind of connects with us you know mm. um, and so part of it is is I try and come back to that and for me when people talk to me about writer's block and mm. stuff it's oftentimes writer's block is tied to this kind of thing because totally. it's like oh I, you know I, f- I feel this pressure to write a song that mm. is going to be quote unquote successful yeah. Yeah. good enough and so yeah. you're what you're doing then is your starting point for writing is comparison yeah. so you know or like oh how do I write a good pop song how do I write a good oh, oh now all these new songs are doing country elements oh no or oh, should I have a trap drum beat in my like you know like <laughs> yeah. it's like these are the things and it's like none of that is a good starting point mm. for real art and the irony of that is that it's only real art that actually goes on to be truly successful. Yeah. Yeah. That's the truly universal thing. So for me, it's all about come back to the first thing, what, like your, your core thing. Why do you love making music? The big mm. one. And if that kind of, and once again, this is like an identity mm. and purpose thing. Mm. If inside of you, you are like, I feel like my art needs to be in the world, you know, mm. that's a great starting point mm. and then if you want to build goals from that okay well well then what does success look like for in that thing oftentimes people will say to me oh i want to get 150 million streams on spotify i want to headline coachella and it's like those are all yep. fine but even if even if you get them they're probably you're probably not going to feel fulfilled mm. um and also if you, you know, and, you know, realistically, the most likely and you don't get those, you're also not going to feel fulfilled. Mm. So it's a bit of a lose-lose situation because um, what happens is you're constantly comparing yourself. You're constantly feeling like you're short of the mark. You're constantly feeling rubbish about yourself. Um, so what's more helpful is to try and think about things through like a growth mindset mm. lens. So, oh. Uh, <laughs> <okay>. um, <clears throat> growth mindset. How do I, how do I get better each and every day. Mm. How do I get better at my craft? How do I tell my story better? How do I engage with with more audience members? Even if it's one more, how do I build my brand? Mm. And this whole thing. So for me, you know, I've spent a lot of time talking with lots of different people. And so when people come to me with these sort of numerical sort of KPI Mm. things, yeah. Uh, I'm almost uh, I'm almost inclined to want to push them off the bat straight mm. away now because I look at people who come to me and I say, "Hey, what's your goal?" And they say, "Oh man, my only goal is to be you know better yes. today than, one, yeah. than I was yesterday." Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, okay, that is the mentality mm. that will drive you forward. Mm. Um, and so it's only the people who are committed to like that sort of slog, I, I think, who can can really truly crack it and and make something you know in this industry mm. long term. Mm. Yeah, like it's all about that sustainability. Yeah, yeah, mm. and I think it's the healthiest way. Yeah. Yeah. Sustainability yeah. is a whole other. Yeah. I mean, that's what we all want, right? We want to we want to not only make music or be in the music industry, but we want to be able to keep doing it. We want to make it a career. That's that's like a dream on its own, and mm. and that's a really good mindset to have to uh, on self improvement every yeah, day. Yeah, it's it's like a long game, right? Like even, yeah. even and as you you know. When you are starting out, you might think that like playing main stage Coachella is like the be all end all. Yeah. But probably by the time if you go do get to that t- point, by the time you get to that point, you're gonna yeah. have bigger dreams and and mm, other things hopefully. that you want to <laughs> yeah, yeah. work towards. And so I think, I mean, even outside of music, that that is so relevant. Is that if you're just wanting to be different or like have what somebody else has got or have this bigger sort of numerical, more maybe service level or materialistic thing, mm. you're probably never going to achieve that because as you work towards that, that's going to shift and change. And, you know, I think I want to be like this and or do this. And then once you're there, you're like, oh, I'm actually not happy with this. Yeah, I want to yeah. do something different. But I really love the idea of just focusing almost like not even comparing rather than comparing yourself to other people, like comparing yourself to your past self, mm. but not in a negative way. And like, Oh, look at where I am now compared to where I was a year ago. And, and how can mm. I continue to work towards being better or 
or getting better at what I do so that in a year from now I look back on where I am now and I think, oh, yeah. cool, I've grown yeah. in some way. And I have a couple, you know, and just two thoughts just off the back of that. But, you know, all the time, and I use this quote often, but, but, but people overestimate what they can achieve in one year, but they mm. underestimate what they can achieve in five. Mm. Right? So there's this thing of actually one year in the grand scheme of things in music, it's not that long. True. And people mm. think that they can go from here to here and they ultimately end up disappointed. And I've seen more people drop off after a year and a half of trying than I see people actually pushing through. And, yeah. you know, we're all kind of wanting to have those stories where we're sort of, you know, we, we write this banger and it comes yeah. out and then, and then you know, we're super successful. But that's any of those stories, like they're anomalies. A lot of the people who have sustainable careers, it's been a long journey. And some of the mm -hmm. people I'm looking at who are, who are coming through in, in Aotearoa now, you know, they're just starting to hit some sort of exponential growth. And, and I know that they've been plugging for like five years, 10 yeah, years. Really, and, it's this, right? and it's this sort of this intentional thing always in the same direction. So that for me is really important. I share it with people all the time. Like, you know, people overestimate what they can achieve mm. uh, in a year, but underestimate what they can achieve in five. So that, that sort of commitment to growth is so important. Mm. And then the second thing off the back of what you said is because, yes, like when you have goals like I want to play this festival or I want to have this song does that, those aren't necessarily bad goals like in and of themselves. Mm. But there is this thing of like, when you get there, you always want the next thing. Mm. So this, I think, is a really important point when we're talking about well-being mm. is that we are very much sort of socially conditioned to keep staying productive, keep looking mm. to the next thing. Right. And so what happens is that people just plow through goals, not even stopping and acknowledging them. Yes. Yeah, so so the thing I say about this is like, those aren't bad goals, but celebration should be a really important part of what you're doing, mm. right? Wins. So if you are mm. releasing a song, have some friends out. When it comes out, have some friends over for dinner. Crack a bottle of wine. Have some drinks. Talk about the process, but mm. celebrate it. You know, yes, we've done this thing. So regardless of whether or not it does, does well, you guys have created this thing. You've totally. worked at it. You've, you've probably sunk money into it yeah, and time yeah. into it. And so to actually celebration is such an important part and it's something that we neglect. And, mm. and I think that that's a huge reason why people experience things like burnout mm. totally. is because they just keep plowing forward, mm. right? Committed to being productive, always working seven days a week, like just committed to the dream, yeah. but they're not taking any time to step back and go, oh, this thing I've done is really good mm. and I'm proud of it, mm. you know? So when you don't have those moments, you start to get, in a way, disconnected from the things you're doing because you just become obsessed with being productive. Mm. Totally. So that's, for me, that celebration thing is really important. Yes, we're playing a long game. That doesn't mean that you don't pace yourself and yeah, take time to sure. rest and enjoy the things that you're doing. Mm. Yeah. Man, you're nailing it. That's exactly it. Like, yeah. We've been feeling that so hard, actually. Like, that's – well, I, I personally yeah. have. That's – yeah. You're, and I'm, I know that so many people – I think you're just like, yeah, you open up a chasm <laughs> of, of all these, like – Oh, I don't even I know think what to it's say. just it's it's really <laughs> interesting to have this conversation in this space because yeah. as well as like facilitating this conversation in this sense we are also yeah. artists that yeah. have dealt with all of these things in that way and are like ex like navigating exactly that right now totally. it's like you know and I think almost simultaneously realizing in our own minds that it's really important to just sit back and be proud of where we've come and like what we've already achieved and just take a minute to be like, this is actually pretty cool. Yeah. And then move on to the next thing. And it ties in with sustainability. You know, if, if it, it's exactly, if, if you, if you go too hard, too fast, you burn out, it, it it's not a long-term plan mm. and, and it won't be a sustainable project. And that, that five year, quote is is so spot on as well you know mm. um yeah and and as an artist like you are the not just the creator but the like the whole mechanical system and if, if you're not functioning then yeah. you can't actually produce your art or continue doing what you actually love or you know if, if you really enjoy writing songs and and you you um reach burnout point you probably just don't have the capacity to even produce what you want to produce anymore mm. if, if you if you don't have that energy or yeah that's yeah. right 
Yeah, I think it's incredibly important. All of this comes down to to really looking after ourselves, being connected to our music in a way that's really healthy, but also having, you know, what I would call like rhythms because mm. I think musicians don't really like to talk about discipline. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very true. But, you know, but to think about our life as a rhythm and being able to incorporate some moments of intense work and then moments of rest mm. and yeah. moments of like celebration and moments of getting your head down and like, you know, the, this is this is kind of what our, our life needs to look like and that contributes to like a, a good life or a healthy life, you mm. know, like just try and think about a song that is just like all happening at one level, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, whole band and everyone's singing like we're just like that's just not a good song mm. right and in the same way it's like if this is the way you sort of tackle your career if this is where you, if you were just all out all the time um it's just you're not going to feel healthy you're not going to feel good and ultimately like the end product of your life's work is just just probably not going to be that great because you haven't taken the time to to really focus on mm. yourself and to you know be present to like mm. the dynamic nature of life or something yeah so. <laughs> for sure yeah do you feel like are there any like tangible pieces of advice that you feel like I mean I think not that this isn't tangible but are there any like maybe more actionable things that you feel like you've either tried yourself or recommended to artists or seen artists mm. try that have been really beneficial um something could be as simple as making sure you eat three meals a day <laughs> getting enough sleep or getting some taking a weekend or yeah, yeah. is it what I do mean, you think? I mean, it's really boring, but the it's quite simple. The, the whole thing around sort of, you know, eat, sleep, and exercise. So anytime you talk to someone about, you know, mental health stuff or things going on, the first sort of three things you ask is like, you know, what's your eating like? What's your sleeping mm. like? What kind of exercise are you getting? Those are like the first three things to look at. And so if you are feel like you're struggling, those are the first three things you mm. can look at. Am I eating well? Am I getting to sleep at a reasonable time? Um, you know, and if and if the answer is no to some of those things, well, then you just, it's also a very simple process. Why is that like that? Mm. And what can I do to change that? You know, these are, it's not rocket science, but it does require an intentionality and some time to kind of go, um, to kind of go on that journey mm. with yourself a little bit. Um, and so you can put some of those things in place. And then if you are still struggling, that's when you can go and look for some additional help. Or you can come to someone like myself or you can go to, you know, call Music Helps or you can go see a counsellor and you can start dealing with some of the some of the deeper stuff that's mm. kind of going on because, you know, we've all got our baggage, we've all got our things we're for carrying sure. and th that affects us day to day as yeah. well. Mm. Um, but I think that's incredibly important. You know, I notice as we're talking, you guys, you guys keep using the word burnout a lot. Mm. And burnout is something that is a little bit misunderstood because – you know, it's actually this thing that exists past the point of exhaustion. Mm. Often we work ourselves to exhaustion sure. and you sort of treat exhaustion by by resting. So, you know, mm. you, you sleep for two days or you go and do some things that are good for you. But burnout is what happens when you get to a point and kind of feels like no amount of rest mm. really like fills the tank up again. Yeah. And that's when you start talking about burnout, like that's, that's not a small thing. Mm. That's something that actually requires some serious time off, like two months, three months yeah, wow. away from creating, yeah. sometimes away from work. So burnout is like a serious thing. And yet it's something that I think most creatives who are pushing to get themselves mm. into this career, they exist like right on the precipice of mm. right on the edge of burnout. So yeah. they're perpetually exhausted. Kind of pushing yeah. And then every goes. now and then you get someone who kind of falls off that cliff. And so yeah. what I'm, what I try and do is, you know, we've, you know, anytime We've got these great phone services and you can call people, but to me, those are what I would call like bottom of the cliff strategies. Mm. Yeah. You have to have safety nets to catch people when they nice. go off. But a lot of the work I'm doing and the things I'm advocating for are what I would call like top of the cliff strategies. Mm. How do we put systems in place in our lives and a sort of uh, a, an approach to how we're living and how we're mm. creating that at least safeguards me from that point. So mm. learning to recognize, oh, I'm feeling really exhausted. Oh, I'm working too many hours in the mm. week. What do I need to do to just step back from that and give myself permission to charge the tank? You know, mm. um, <clears throat> they've sort of done studies on people who work, you know, more than uh, 55 hours a week, you know, up to 90 hours a week or something. But after 55 hours a week, like you're no more productive. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're not, nice. you're not, yeah. you're not generating nice. anything else, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, 
Great comparison. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, man. Yeah. So, you know, so so people push themselves to the limit all the time, but they're actually not generating any better result. Mm. A really good example that I use from music all the time, and, and you guys will resonate with this because I think we've all had this, but <laughs> how many times have you spent three or four or five or six hours trying to fix something in a song, yeah. and then you just finally go to sleep because you're tired, but then you wake up the next day and you find the thing in five minutes. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, time, a fresh right? set yeah. of ears, yeah. you know? Yeah. And and that is like just a, a great metaphor for what we need to do with our lives. It's like if you give yourself that time to rest, you can actually trust your creative capacity mm. and your creative ability. Like yeah. if you're you know that you're a creative, if you know that you're an artist, it's like trust that. Mm okay, I can put this thing down and I can come back to it. Mm. Yeah. Or I can come back to it and recognize that it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> need anything else or it's not good enough and I can leave it. But there's no sort of, you know, insecurity in that process. But but knowing that you can step away from it, give yourself what you need and so that you can come back and do the do the thing you do mm. better. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. clear thinking. That's, yeah. Spoiling. Yeah, and I remember someone saying you can do like an eight-hour work day in a six or a four-hour Stint, mm-hmm. like not stint, but like four hour work day. It, if you just like, it, it's, it's in, in an eight hour work day, no one actually gets eight hours of work done because no one really has the capacity to actually no. go that long. To focus so actually eight hours just straight. Mm. do four hours of work and do something else in those other four hours or, yeah. or have that like, like broken work. I mean, that's something that's really beneficial if you're studying is is rather than spending five hours trying to like revise mm. for your exams is spend half an hour and then do something else for 20 minutes and yeah. then spend another half an yeah. hour. And I think we as musicians, like for some reason, try, like disregard all the stuff that's so like obvious in, in all other areas, if that <laughs> makes sense. Like it, often yeah. you, know, you know all this information and you still go ahead and push yourself to the limit anyway. And it's like, Sometimes it's the real question is like, what does it take to internally realize? And and like I like what you said before about you have to let yourself, you have to allow yourself to actually take it, yeah. take it easy because no one can really create that environment for you except yourself. Yeah. We're in this. Um, sort of space and we're like growing towards like as a general societal whole talking more about mental health and I think yeah. that's like Normally. the most beneficial thing is is talk about it like give someone a call if you need support give your friend a call or your yeah. fellow musician like normalizing that conversation normalizing eh? that conversation yeah. can can be that top of the cliff sort of support sometimes it's just nice. talking to another musician about what you're dealing with and realizing that oh okay this is yeah. something we're all navigating together i can't stress enough how much community is the antidote to isolation mm. Really. Mm. and and so get out to shows get into places where you can create music with other people tell people if you're struggling with mm. something talk about it you're not a burden to them mm. you know oh, um, exactly. the thing is it all, everyone in this music industry has some sort of like issue or things that they're feeling insecure mm. about or they disqualify themselves over but actually we're all much closer to to the experience than than what we think of each mm. other Absolutely. and so talk to people yeah. you know reach out to yeah. people let people know community like w- my belief is like humans aren't meant to exist in isolation. We're no, not meant to be wildly totally. individual. We are. We we thrive in community. We're, mm. we're social primates, you know. At the yeah. end of the day, <laughs> so you know, lean into that, mm. and and a lot of other things will begin to like fall into place. For me, it's a, it's a key thing. Yeah. And those conversations make for great songs as well. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. For Suddenly, sure. a lot of people can relate to your music, and it's it's awesome if there's a you know, deeper sort of level yeah. to your music. Yeah. Hey, thanks so much for, for the chats, Calvin, um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, about everything, sort of the ins and outs of the artist's, artist's well-being. well-being. Yeah. Um, if, if like me, you have a ton of burning questions still, um, let us know and we'll, we're super keen to get back to all of the questions, whether it's via a message or a comment or anything, um, just hit us up, let us know. And Calvin's always, you know, Emails are open. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thanks for tuning in to the Ins and Outs podcast.